So I thought of taking some cautions because um, I talked too much. Oh. And uh, and so maybe, and I've been open for cautions so far, so maybe that might be good. Yes, yeah. well, there's a question that came in earlier. Does any that came in earlier? I think, is it okay if I, I'll take this one first? Yeah, yeah, we have plenty of time. This one is, Dashala, please describe the symptoms of spirit harm. Mm -hmm. It's hard, you know, um, it's hard for me to describe. I think, um, because sometimes the symptoms of spirit harm and some illness is so um, sometimes it's hard to distinguish, you know. Um, <clears throat> so normally, you know, um, certain teachers who have more higher level of their state of mind to see those, um, they are able to say that. Um, Sometimes there are some kind of oral mediums, and again, because they have certain power to see different beings that we cannot see, you know, so they, uh, some, but for the normal persons, um, is hard and for me it would be hard for me i don't have any of those you know um sometimes like people have you know a problem with their skin rashes that you know and sometimes they they go see doctor and they they try all treatment but you know They cannot heal, they cannot cure, you know. And in those cases, sometimes it could be Naga, um, you know, some kind of spirit in Naga, um, you know. Um, and those happen when you kind of, when you hurt, harm places where Naga could be living. You know, it's like just like someone tried to destroy your home and you are upset, you know. And so some of those Naga spirit, you know, that is why in Tibet, you know, you don't disturb any of those big trees, water sources, wells, because those could be the places where those Nagas and other spirits live, you know. Um, um, and so sometimes when you, you know, disturb those things, you know, um, knowingly, unknowingly, you know, um, that then um, that could be their reaction, their response, you know, to that. And um, and in, in such cases, you know, then there are certain ceremony, pujas, not what we call Naga pujas ceremonies. And, uh, and when they do that, and then, you know, some cases people get healed from those kind of rashes or skin skin disease, which they have not been able to. Um, and sometimes, you know, um, yeah, people could have some, you know, mental issues where they have no control, you know. They lose the control as to some energy is taking over them, you know. Um, and some most time they are just okay, normal, but they are instant something, something comes and they kind of lose control, and as to some energies are taking over them and acts. So you know those those could be some of the symptoms of such as um, spirit harm in that. So it, it could be many, so yeah. Just to follow up on that, on that question, 
that person says, thank you, Kachala. What about spirit harm in the home environment? How do you recognize it? Is spirit harm also a psychic attack? What does that question mean when you say, can the spirit harm be a psychic attack? Is it because the spirit harm someone become a psychic attack or or no, is that the questions or yeah, the question is it's it's what about how do you recognize spirit harm in the home environment? Uh -huh. That's one question to follow okay. up. And then the other and then I'll ask for clarification on the other question. You know, like in the home environment, sometimes you cannot find externally, if you try to check all the conditions, why there is negative energy in that. You know, something's wrong, you know, despite trying all, always disharmony. Even when people are trying nice to be each other, trying to be kind to each other, trying to do everything right, correct, to keep peaceful and harmonious, sometime, of course, it will be taste sometime when you don't have, you know, you don't put effort. And um, you can see with clarity, you know, there is some issues with either any part of family or other, or someone who need to improve themselves. Um, but sometimes when everyone's trying best and trying still, you know, sometimes there is this kind of energies. And uh, sometimes we know that is some kind of negative energy, some kind of uh, almost like pollution or negative energy, but we don't know exactly what and where. And in those cases, sometimes it could be spirit harms uh, or, you know, um, but again, I said, um, everything is more kind of individuals. It's not like this uh, very general for everything. It, you have to understand more specifically because two similar situations seem same, but one could be spirit harm, one might be not a spirit harm. You know, so so that is why it is important for. Uh, someone like high lamas or some others to really understand that situation and see that uh, is difficult to generalize. Okay, and then follow up with this question is, is that Tara practice will help clear this or is there something else that should be done? Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, you know, if we have very strong practice and very strong faith and strong practice, I think, you know, that should be able to protect, you know. Um, but sometimes, as I mentioned, our faith are shaky, you know, not strongly rooted, you know. It is like I've seen people, you know, where they don't believe in a lot of things. So many things, they are very skeptical like myself, you know, uh, or even more worse than myself. Uh, and at least in my cases, I don't reject. I just doesn't know how accurate or true those things are. Just like as I was saying about self arisings self-spoken statues, those things. I do believe it's possible, but I cannot, I cannot, it's hard for me to believe every, every of those who people say, you know, because there is no really strong, apart from being past, you know, proof at, at this time, at this time, and what the proof, so anyway, so that is the one. But, when things goes wrong or some, when they have challenges and problems in their life, then they try everything, you know? 
They try Buddhist rituals, they try Hindu rituals, they try shamanism rituals. Of course, they have done all the different medication and all they didn't work, and then they will try all of that. But not necessarily because they have a strong faith in any of them. It's just like, maybe this might help. Maybe this might help. Maybe this might help. And so a lot of time we are almost like that, you know. Every day in our life or every day in our heart, we don't have that strong faith. And then when we feel like when there's some problem, maybe I should pray here. I should maybe this might help. Or maybe I should pray here or I should do this ceremony or I should this. And so when we do in with that kind of attitude and that kind of mind, then sometimes it's not strong, it's not so powerful as it can be when you when you do from total faith from the depth of your heart, you know. So therefore it depends on individuals, you know, how um, the power of the practice. Um, and then, of course, in certain um, cases, certain situations, you know, um, by requesting, asking certain, um, you know, lamas or monasteries or the monks to do certain prayers, ceremonies, sometimes those can also be helpful, beneficial. But again, what I can show is not guaranteed, okay? But it doesn't hurt. Um, from karmic point of view, you create positive karma, something virtuous, but whether it is going to re um, free from whatever um, challenge or difficulty you are going to, uh, to be free from that, you know, um, is um yeah you cannot say for sure yeah so that person says thank you very okay. much so we've got samantha i know i've got we've got you online but i think alex yeah. had a question hi thank you um would you say a little bit about the visualizations in particular in terms of uh size and um direction so you you mentioned when you were describing the visualization that when Tar was on top of your head that she was facing the same way you do. Does that mean otherwise she's not when she's in front? And sometimes mm -hmm. I, there's like three different sizes where those that I visualize show up for me. Does that uh, matter? Should you aspire to certain things? So on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think... <laughs> The size, depending on what purpose you are doing, can have a different. For example, if you are using the Buddha's image to develop concentrations, okay, to develop a concentration, of course, you can use different objects. You know, bread is one. You know, you could use any other image, flower, or or any other image, but normally. In Vatrayana teachings, they recommend the Buddha's image, you know. So if you are using that meditative concentration, then normally the size is like um, four, what do you call, inch fingers, you know. And, and not high, like normally we, we visualize high in front of your eye and where you receive the all the when you visualize receiving the powerful light and um but like in front of you just like this um height like if you look with your eyes straight and like that so small and not high and not too low but if you are just looking straight where you can see it that straight so in that cases, the space, how high, how low, and the size is like that. And the reason, if our minds, 
a lot of time our mind follow our senses. And with following the senses, you know, when you think too high, your mind go high. When you do something low, your mind go downwards. You know, so it leads to um, excitements or uh, laxities. And to develop concentrations, you, you have to be free from those two things. So that is why without getting, so that is the one we visualize in terms of size and in terms of, um, and also you visualize kind of light, you know, but it's light, but at the same time, very heavy. It's made out of light, not a concrete, but at the same time, it's not so light that the wind can blow, right? Is always remaining very heavy because if you, if you don't visualize very light moving slowly, then again, your mind gets distracted when it moves. So you want to visualize it is very unmovable, but in the nature of light. So that is that is when you are trying to develop a um, meditative concentration by using a Buddha image, for example. But like when you are using like what we did, Tara, for example, or any other deity, you know, um, visualizing to receive the blessing, um, to purify and to receive the blessings, then we normally visualize above, above your head, you know. And sometimes you can visualize, it depends on individual, on top of your crown, you know, or a little bit further, depending on um, some people find more easier if they visualize on top of their crown in terms of um, like receiving the purifying and receiving the blessings. Um, but for some people, if you visualize in front of you, it's more difficult to visualize the clarity details of that deity. And, but if you visualize a little bit in front of you, but above you, let's say, you know, one meter, two meters um, space between you and the deity and higher than yourself, you know. And in that, so in terms of size, then I don't think that matters so much, you know. Um, it has to be a specific size in that way for that. The main thing is you are able to visualize as clear as possible of the image, you know, and then to be able to visualize receiving the powerful, blissful light and nectar that purify and cleanse, you know. So, so I think that is that that um, so whatever is, um, might be more easier, you know, to visualize that, um, as I mentioned, and most in those cases mostly is. You are facing the deity. You are facing the deity. And in certain situation, like the one we did, and in a certain practice, the deity comes, you know, on top of your crown, and in the same um, direction as you. And then deity is like the, the Buddha or the your guru who leads, you know, you, and then requesting others Buddhas or the blessings and initiation like that. In that way, then it is like same, the Buddha come in front of you and with the same direction, then the Buddha on behalf of you, that deity requests other deities. And like, so there are certain practice ceremonies, um, initiation like that in that sense, but normally it's, you are, you are facing the, the deity. So when they, when the instruction, says something about the, the deity at your heart, they're not, it's not physically right there. Yeah, you, you imagine, visualize it is inside you, oh, it, it, inside, inside in your, your heart. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, I know, like for example, um, if you are unable to 
visualize yourself as the Tara because you don't have the uh, empowerment to do that. Then, you know, either you can visualize on top of your crown or you can visualize in inside you at your heart. Uh, you can visualize your heart, you can visualize the in the you know mundis and on top of the mundis you visualize the tara and from that tara then um you know um purifying the sentient beings leading them to enlightenment uh, also we didn't do that but sometimes also you do the making offering to the all the buddhas bodhisattvas all of uh, those, those different practice coming from the heart of the tara within your heart yeah um, we have um, Mary Jo. There's one. Mary Jo, is it okay if I take this one from online and then I'll get you? Is that okay? Is that okay? She's been waiting. Thank you so much, Mary Jo. Samantha, thank you for your patience. Samantha's question is Yashala, I have received green Tara initiation from another practice in a different lineage. Is it okay for me to visualize myself as Tara during this practice? Are initiations universal or practice specific? Um, it should be, you know, if if the initiation is, you know, given correctly and authentic, so it shouldn't it shouldn't be it shouldn't matter whether you receive from different tradition or not. Yeah, it's okay. And Samantha, if you have a follow-up, please drop it in the chat, book, chat box. But here's the, Mary Jo. Thank you. So what we, when we were reading about uh, Tara reciting that, there are several times when she's stamping her feet and trampling the seven times or something. And um, I'm just wondering, is that like in determination? Or is that like in dissatisfaction? Or I just, it's such a vivid image of this beautiful goddess stamping her feet and that I'm just wanting to know more. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Well, you know, um, I cannot recall all of them, but like uh, the 21 Taras, a uh, different posture and different. Um, and we are describing those different 21 Taras, and some of them are peaceful, some of them are semi wrathful some of them are wrathful, and all of them are how to help and benefit sentient beings. Sometimes they help with a peaceful means, sometimes when they are unable to help with peaceful means, then it requires semi wrathful method, and sometimes when that doesn't work, then sometimes it's a through the wrathful method that they subdue, that they help benefit sentient beings. And so it is talking, and like all of those um, trembling and all of that, you know, there are two different meanings, uh, as many as um, as we discussed before. Um, maybe not here in Wednesday, you know, there is a, what you call interpretive meaning and definitive meanings. When we talk about definite meaning, it's more to do with inner demon, humbling, inner demon of those ethical emotions. And that is smashing or humblings with seven feet, uh, seven time, or whatever, how many time is, is about your inner, um, here, you know, the Tara's inner, exalted wisdom, you know, tramplings over the ignorance and those negative um, feelings. But on um, definite, not definite, uh, interpretive meanings, then it is, you know, those sentient beings, you know, who are unable to subdue by peaceful means, then sometimes the Tara manifests in a wrathful wrathful um, form to, to, to subdue with compassion. And, uh, and so that, is, that shows the form of that. 
So those that have more kind of semi ratful or ratful forms, you know. Yeah, and then to know if you really want to learn more, then you have to study the the commentary on twenty one paras. Uh, I don't know. I I think I have done here before. I know I've done somewhere, but uh, um, so so I don't know. I did somewhere, and so it is. Uh, in there, but also there are many other teachings by other teachers on 24 Taras that you can read, watch, uh, if you want to really understand how each of those 21 Taras, different forms, different colors, um, their different activities, and what it represents with each of those different sound, home, pay, all of that, and tremblings, all of that. Yeah. Just a side note, there's an archive also of teachings that were held at TNL on that um, archive.net. There are audio teachings, so there's many teachings on there as well, but I don't recall. <laughs> any, any other questions? Susan? Yes. Thank you. I had two questions, but can I ask a follow up to something you said to someone else? Uh -huh. So, if you had the white Tara initiation, then when you do the green Tara practice, it's okay to visualize yourself as the deity or not? I didn't understand that. I think maybe not. You know, um, yeah. So, if you do green Tara, then you can either visualize your heart or on your top if you don't have that initiation. Yeah. That I asked. Thank you. Um, the other one is we've been doing in the practice the five chakras, and I'm familiar with seven chakras from Hindu maybe tradition or other ones. And the one I think we didn't do the crown or the um, solar plexus. So I'm curious about that. Also, there is a also in Buddhist there's a crown chakras as well. You know, um, but again, honestly. Um, I don't remember all of them because I don't do the practice myself, so it's clear. I think I have studied and read at one time, but if you don't practice, you forget. Hmm. Okay. Well, you know, I'm a teacher as well of other things, and this is the kind of question you never want your student to ask, but it's in my mind, so I have to ask. If we were to just for practical purposes, simplify the practice. And let's say we're going to do the long version sometime, but we want to do something. But would that just be chanting the mantra then with the intention in your heart? Or what's the most simplified version of keeping up with your power practice? Yeah, you can do simple visualizations and then recite the mantras. You know, if you can add 21 para or just one uh, shorter version of 21 para or even one verse of any of the praise to Tara, uh, and then recite the mantra. And so, yeah, you know, it, 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 you can do visualization. You do, If you have time, you can do more details. If you don't have time, and you can just think the green Tara is there, and you just have the general image that you can um, create, you know. And especially if you have done a lot, then you don't have to go all detail. You can, you can have the details met quickly, just like that. At the very beginning, you know, it's nice to go to details so you have better. And then, yeah, yeah you can do it. And if you don't have even time for that, then just recite the mantra. It's also beneficial. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions here? Mary Jo has. So the matrams, or matras, would they be repeated nine or, uh, you know, a certain number of times would be better than the <laughs> other ones at the Tara? Well, you know, I think oh, really uh, I don't think, you know, 
It has to have a very specific number, but generally number three, seven, 21s are kind of regarded kind of auspicious numbers, you know, so therefore, like you see very often, you know, three times, seven times, 21 times, 108 times, you know, those are kind of more kind of common kind of auspicious numbers. And I think that seems to be also in Hindu as well, some of those numbers, you know, um, they seem to share similarity. Um, <clears throat> and, um, but I don't think it's wrong if you just do four or five, you know, or if you just do one or two, you know, is nothing wrong about it. But in generally, or that kind of that's some kind of auspicious number. So there we try to do a lot of time, three times, seven times, twenty-one times, hundred and eight. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, Geshe, thank you so much for this retreat. What really kind of changed, helped move my mind a little bit more, <laughs> immovable mind, <laughs> was Tara, the female Chenrezig, was really, really powerful for me to hear that. So thank you so much. Um, also, just sharing a little bit, I, I tend to do the 21 Taras more than I do the green Tara. Um, just quickly, is there a certain visualization that you recommend if, if I'm doing just 21? Sometimes I, I start with Tara and then from her heart is the, you know, 21 Taras. Any recommendations? I know it's just... Yeah, I think if you want to do 21 Tara visualization, then, you know, um, I think you have to study what those 21 Tara uh, functioning of each of those different, they each have, again, even though all of them are Tara, but also they manifest in different form for different purpose, different functionings. So, you know, according to that, you know, um, oh, yeah, it flew away. Um, so then you visualize individual those 21 Tara as the color, everything that, and then for what they represent. And then, you know, if you're working with certain problem or certain obstacles, then related with that particular data that is related with that particular um, obstacles, so you try to do that. Yeah. Any others? If not, then yeah, we will do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I just realized because I've been sitting with the answer you gave about the green tar versus the white tar. And I'm wondering if there's a way that if enough of us were to request that you gave the green tar empowerment before you're leaving, if that might be possible sometime. Unfortunately, you know, I don't do any empowerment. Um, sorry about that. Uh, I've been requested at many different places, but uh, I don't feel I'm ready to do that. Um, in some of in some of basic requirements to give, I have those requirements, but it's just a basic requirement and. And I think if people feel that they need the empowerment initiation, then I think um, they should receive a more qualified teachers. Um, so yeah, that's all I Thank can you. say. Thank you, Gashala. There are no more questions at this point. So then I think is supposed to be teachings and question and answer. I think I'm not going to do the teachings, you know, um, even though 
I think we discussed most of them. Uh, in terms of the practice itself, there are certain parts that I thought of kind of talking on, but I think we already talked before, not this time, but like in other time when we did, we did other practices such as the seven limb practices, you know, I think, uh, which is important that you see seven limb practices almost in all the different deities practices, sadhanas and so on. But even though I feel like I, I want to discuss a little bit that before, but with the time and also since I've also quite discussed that quite, quite many times, even not everyone have heard about that, but um, so I thought maybe, you know, I will skip that. Uh, instead, maybe I would like to close with a more kind of um, dedications, more kind of, um, more really extensive dedications. Yes, uh, Are you sure? Is this out? Sure. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. Yes. If I were to get a uh, picture of uh, Green Tara, uh -huh. I'm sure FPMT has images available. Um, and do you think that's just where to go, is to go to FPMT and get an image there? I think so. Okay. FPMT, if they don't have, then you, you just have to, uh, yeah, ask someone who know. Because sometimes if you just Google, there will be all kind of yes, there are many. artistic. Sometimes the artistic is just artistic. They don't really have the qualified exact things. So that is where you have to, if you are just looking for art, then it doesn't matter. But if you want to use something as for your spiritual practice, visualization, then you have to get the, the proper one. And... Uh, and that fits all the descriptions and everything that. So, but if I don't know whether there is, you know, FMD website, if there is, then it, it should be um, just. Okay. So, can we go to the practice, phase number three, Refuge and Bodhisattva? And again, yeah. Is it on? It's page three. Yeah. So again, even though we don't have time to visualize detail, but you just try to feel, you know, green Tara in the space above you and surrounded by all other 20 Taras. So all 21 Taras are there. Even though you cannot visualize each of them detail, but you just try to feel they all are there. And then you try to also feel, you know, all sentient beings are surrounding you and engaging in the practice together, you know, for oneself and all sentient beings to achieve fully enlightenment in order to liberate all sentient beings from all the suffering samsara and the cause of suffering and samsara. Okay, so I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and Supreme Assembly by merits from giving and other perfections. May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly 
by my merit from giving and other perfection. May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient. Sangye chodam sogye chonam la, Sangju padunane kyapsunche, Nagi jin sogye pe sonamge, Dola penche sangye tuva. So then we go to the 21 Tara, which is page number nine, starting with the invocations. Yeah. O da lai ne cho ne ta ni chang ku le chong shi O ba me ge u la ge Yu sun sang ge te le pam Do ma ko che she su su Da da la mi che ben ge sa ge ben me la tu te Om ba kun le do ze ma do ma yum la cha cha So we do the English. From the sublime about the potala, otara, is this there? From your sublime about the potala, otara, born from the green letter thumb, your crown adorned with Amitabha, action mother for the Buddhas of Tiri time, Tara, please come with your attendants. The gods and God bow to your lotus feet, O Tara, you who rescue all who are destined to you, Mother Tara, I pay homage. So can you do in Chanting, anyone? The praises. Oh, my prostrate to the Good noble, noble transcendent liberator. Homage, Tara, swift to row with eyes like lightning instantaneous. Sprung from open stamens of the load of three worlds, dear born lotus. Homage, you with space combines a hundred atoms at fullest, blazing with light rays resplendent as a thousand star collection. Homage, golden blue and lotus, water born in and adorned, giving effort, promise, stay. Patience, meditation, her sphere. Homage, crown of Tathagatas. Actions triumph without limit. We ride on by conquerors' children. Having reached every perfection. Homage, filling with you, Dari. Whom desire, reaction, and space. Trembling with her feet, the seven worlds. Able to draw forth all beings. Homage, worship by the Lord. Shakti, Aga, Brahma, Maru. Honored by the host of spirits. Parters, or and flowers, yakshas. Homage with her. Trade and pay sound. Destroying foes, magic diagrams. Her free pressing, left out, riding. Blazing in the raging fireplace, homage to a very dreadful destroyer of Mara's champions. She with frowning lotus visage, who is slayer of all enemies, homage at her harder fingers. The three do mudra, light ray masses all excited, all directions wheels adorn her. Homage, she so joyous, radiant, crown emitting garlands of light, mirthful laughing with Tutare, subjugating Mara's Davis. Homage, she able to summon all earth guardians assembly, shaking, frowning with her womb sign. Saving from every misfortune, homage crown adorned with crescent, moon all ornaments most shining, Amitabha in her hair, not sending out much light eternal, homage she mid wreath of blaze like eon ending fire abiding, wretched left and choice around you. Troops of enemies destroying. Homage, she who strikes the ground with her palm and her feet. It's scowling with the letter whom the seven levels she does conquer. Homage, happy, virtuous, peaceful. She who school this peace nirvana. She endowed with omen soha. 
destroyer of the great evil, on which she with joy surrounded, tearing foes' bodies asunder, these with whom in knowledge mantra, arrangement of the ten letters, on which she reigned with the letter, of the shape of syllable, whom by foot stamping shakes the three worlds, Mary Manda thou in Vindya, Amish holding in her hand the hair marking of Deva Lake form, with the spoken Tara and Pe, totally dispelling poison, Amish she whom does in their kings, and the kin and rights to honor, armored in all joyful splendor, she dispelled bad dreams and conflicts, Amish she used two eyes with radiance of sun and full moon, with Kashara and Tutare, she dispels severe contagion, homage full of liberating, power by the set of three natures, destroys most of spirit yakshas, and raise corpses supreme to it. These praises with the root mantras and prostrations thus are 21. And then we do the short one. Om, I prostrate to Goddess for destroyer, liberating. Is it there? Om, I prostrate to the Goddess for destroyer, liberating Lady Tara. Homage to the Tara's severest heroine, Ututare, dispelling all fear, granting all benefit with Dure. To her with sound so I bow. Om, I prostrate to the goddess for destroyer, liberating Lady Tara, homage to Tare Seves Hiron, with Tutare dispelling all fear, granting all benefit with Dure, the sound so hard I bomb. Om, Jom, Den, Den, Ma, Lamo, Do, Ma, La, Cha, Sa, Lo. Cha, Da, Do, Ma, Da, Re, Pe, Ma, Tu, Da, Ra, Yi, Ji, Kun, Se, Ma. Tu, Ri, Tu, Na, Tam, Che, Te, Ma. So, Wa, Yi, Ki, Che, La, Ra, Ti. Om, Ta, Re, Tu, Da, Re, Tu, Ri, So, Wa. Om, Ta, Re, Tu, Da, Re, Tu, Ri, So. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Riso, 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 Om Tare Tu Tare Tu
Next long life prayers. And before that, we take a few moments. And then we can dedicate. Due to the, all the virtues that all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, of three, uh, three times in direction, and that oneself, and by all others, and oneself created in three times, which are empty from its own side, all the Buddhas, oneself, and all the virtues. May I, which empty from its own side, achieve fully enlightened state, which is empty from its own side. And liberate all sentient beings which are empty from their own side by myself alone. And due to all the virtues that others at once have created, may the Dharma flourish in all ten directions. May it be established, Dharma be established within the mind of each and every sentient being. Be generated within their mind. And may all the places and beings where Dharma is established, may they increase, improve, and continue to flourish and benefit sentient beings, countless sentient beings. And may his holy Dalai Lama, you know, all other our holy gurus, holy beings, may they all have healthy, long life. May all their great noble project wishes be fulfilled. And may we be able to help contribute to fulfill those wishes and projects. May we never be separated from them in this life, in all Fargo, in the middle state, in all future lives, until we achieve enlightenment. And in all this life, may we always please them by integrating all their teaching, instruction into the practice. And may all sentient beings who are experiencing illness, sickness, whether it's a physical or emotional, mental. And especially in those places, you know, there is so much pain, physical, emotionally, in those war places, Middle East, and in what is happening in Ukraine and Russia and all, and all over the world. May all this pain and illness be cured, healed. And may all of them have perfect good health long and happy life. May all the violent negativities 
that is going in the world, again, the war in Ukraine and Russia in the Middle East. And, you know, unfortunate killings in these countries. And not only this country is happening in so many places. May all this physical violence, as well as emotional, mental violence, the anger, the hatred, ill will feelings, and hateful speeches, and so forth, may all of them be immediately SFI stopped, as well as all the costs that lead to such, you know, the karma of the world that we live in, individual collective karma, and the root of those karma and the delusion may all be immediately SFI. May there be more understanding with each other, better understanding, more tolerance with each other, more kind and compassion with each other, especially the leaders. Through that, may there be more peace, harmony, and happiness in the world that we live in, in the country that we live in. May all sentient beings who have died pass away recently within the last 24 hours and um, 49 days. Those individuals that we know, heard, and also those who we do not know, again, so many being killed everywhere, human beings, animals, and so forth who have died, wherever they are now in the part of, may they all be free from all the fears in the part of, in the middle stage. Wherever they are now, may they be free from all the sufferings and the cause of sufferings. Wherever they are, may they find perfect peace with themselves. And may they have perfect human rebirth, meet the Dharma, actualize the Dharma within their heart, and achieve enlightenment. And may all sentient beings who are experiencing different obstacles and challenges in their life, whatever those are, may they all be free from all the obstacle challenges as, as well as the cause of those obstacles. And may all their problem be solved, find perfect solutions, gather all the favorable conditions, and all their wishes be fulfilled according to the Dharma.
And may we be able to follow the perfect examples set by all the, our gurus, Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, by following their footsteps, by actualizing renunciation, bodhicitta, wisdom within our mind stream, and only helping, benefiting sentient beings all the time, just like themselves. And may all our prayer and dedications be same as the incredible prayer and dedications made by all the Buddhas and both of us. Okay, so we go to long life prayer. <laughs> Ari <laughs> Next, fearless teachers, yeah, the children of victorious ones, Savaka and Prakriya Buddhas, victorious lords and father and son, alone of the lineage master, all the objects of refuge and infinite land. This bestow the virtues and goodness of accomplishing this prayer here and now. Holding and spreading moonies, treasures, and complete teachings through explanation and practice, you are the home of patience that is never discouraged. Incomparable, venerable Guru, to you I make request. While striving single friendly for the sake of your one teachings, the sole gateway through which all benefit and happiness emerge, and for other living beings, you suddenly departed to peace. What a great loss. Nevertheless, through undeceiving truth, or the blessing of the ocean of three jewels, and the great wave of bodhicitta of children of victorious one, may the smile of reincarnation swiftly beam in glory for the fortune. Yep. Multiplying mantras. Yeah. Tum den de dishi shabata chomba yang tapa zopes Namba nanze uji jabola chata lo Chanjo samba samba chenbo kundu sambola chata lo Kayata penza griva awa botani soa Um duru duru de muke soa Kayata penza griva awa botani soa Om Duru Duru Da Muke So, Ayata Pensagriva Ava Botani So, Om Duru Duru Da Muke So, Ayata Pensagriva Ava Botani So, Om Duru Duru Da Muke So, Ayata Pensagriva Ava Botani So, Om Duru Duru Da Muke So, Ayata Pensagriva Ava Botani So, Om Duru Duru Da Muke So, Ayata Pensagriva Ava Botani So, Om Duru Duru Da Muke So Ha. Tum Ten Te Dishe Shabwa Da Shambha Yan. Zobe Sangye Mienke La Bento Rai Uiki Chapo La Cha Cha Lo. Tum Ten Te Dishe Shabwa Da Shambha Yan. Zobe Sangye Ngoa Da Molan Samche Rabdu Dube Chapo La Cha Cha. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We offer, uh, sorry, dear Gashala, we would please may we offer a Thanksgiving mandala. I'm sorry we're so slow. Yes. Uh, okay. Shall we? Yeah. Stop. And then after this, after we finish this, then we'll do a kata lineup afterwards. Thank you so much.
Shayla, could you please screen share the mandala verses? Thank you so much, Shayla. So, so Charlene is offering on behalf of Tupton Norbulin, all the students, benefactors, sponsors, and all of us. I don't have it yet. Uh, yeah. You just see the I just, party boy. Just, I, just, just one? One line is okay. No. <laughs> Shayla, the, the, the mandala verse, please. Oh. May my venerable Lama's life be firm, his white divine action spread in the ten directions. May the torch of the teachings of Lo Song always remain, dispelling the darkness of all beings in the three realms. So thank you very much, everyone, for participating during the weekend, and I hope you you are able to get something to carry and then continue to practice. Thank you, thank you. And so we have a kata offering. There's people. I want you to put yours down, honey. There's a kata offering. People oops, online would like to do, so we let them go first. <laughs> 